this whole sequence was shot entirely on the world's smallest and lightest anamorphic lens, the Suri 35mm T2.9. And while I neatly unpack it from this box, let me tell you what in the world an anamorphic lens is in the first place. So, an anamorphic lens compresses or stretches the image horizontally onto the camera sensor, resulting in a much wider aspect ratio, therefore a broader field of view is captured. And what sets them apart from spherical lenses are basically two things. One is the price, because oh my, these bad boys can cost a leg and an arm, and also the distinctive visual effects they produce. For example, the stretched bokeh, which creates sort of like an oval shaped out of focus areas in the background, as well as horizontal lens flares caused by the unique optical design. But speaking of price, thanks to the companies like Sure, the anamorphic lenses are now affordable. And yes, I do have to put the asterisk to that word. Mostly I review lenses that are, you know, like few hundred dollars here on my channel and although this one is around 1300 US dollars it is still very affordable compared to almost I don't know like hundred thousand dollar lenses. Does it mean it feels cheap is of bad quality and just poor performance? Well I don't have 100k to buy a comparison lens but from what I can see the build quality is amazing. The whole lens is light metal, all of the rings turn super smooth and look how freaking tiny it is, it is unbelievable. To reduce the weight, Sura has put this carbon fiber barrel instead of metal and it looks and feels quite awesome. Of course it is a fully manual lens so you don't have autofocus or some switches on the lens, only the focus and aperture rings. Focus ring is smooth and pleasant, its rotation angle is 120 degrees which is great in my experience because the amount you need to turn from closest focus distance to infinity is easily doable within one motion of your hand in case you don't use a follow focus. There is some focus breathing but I'm not too picky about it. Another great thing is that this lens provides a constant squeeze ratio of 1.6 times throughout the whole focusing range. And even though it is a 35mm lens, the field of view is close to what a 22mm spherical lens would produce. And to give you a comparison of what this squeeze looks like for the image, here I'm using Sony 35mm f1.8 FE lens on Sony a7 IV. But this is how the same scene looks like with Surrey anamorphic lens. As you can see, a much wider field of view due to that 1.6x squeeze. In front, this lens features a 58mm filter thread in case you want to throw on some variable ND filter. And the closest focus distance of this lens is 0.9 meters or 3 feet. It definitely is not the closest focus distance, especially for the 35mm. As mentioned earlier, it is a full frame lens and actually they have ton of mounts. The aperture ring is from T2.9 to T16 and cool thing is that focus scales are both in feet and meters. And lastly, if you like an anamorphic lens but you are too overwhelmed with those blue streaks that sometimes are too distracting, Suri actually makes two versions, one with blue flares and the other one with natural ones. And I went with natural flares because first of all they have this beautiful yellowish color and also because they are sort of there, you see them if you look for them, but they are not the first thing you see in the image. Anamorphic lenses typically aren't as sharp as similar spherical lenses because they have additional glass elements, but also because images are often produced using an ultra wide angle of view. In this comparison between the Sony 35mm f1.8 FE on the left and Surrey 35mm T2.9 on the right, this is at 100%, this is at 200% and here's 400%. Can you tell the difference? Nevertheless, you don't necessarily buy an anamorphic lens for its sharpness but rather for its distinctive look and of course there are a few more downsides but they are more general anamorphic lens related downsides rather than specific to this lens. For example, they are usually more expensive, more heavy, a manual focus and that once you start shooting your documentary or other type of work with anamorphic lens, you probably need to shoot the whole film with anamorphic lenses. This specific 35mm lens from Surrey, well, I think the risks are low for you to try and see if this is something for you or not, because comparatively it is not crazy expensive, 
build quality is great and image is amazing. Also the 35mm focal length which is quite universal and necessary focal length is great to have. In short, this lens is not for everyone, but it is great. It's definitely worth giving a try. Let me know what you think about this anamorphic lens and hey, don't forget to keep on creating.